Hello, in this video, uh, we're going to examine uh, another type of biofuel called biodiesel. And we're going to look at um, some characteristics of biodiesel, uh, its source, what it looks like, and um, how, it, how it's, it's made. And then we'll also look at some ethical and sustainability uh, considerations for the use of bi uh, of biofuels. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So let's uh, talk first about biodiesel and where it comes from. And so biodiesel is generated from fats and oils, specifically um, we would call these triglycerides. And I'll show you a picture of a triglyceride in a couple of slides. And they can come from cooking oil or, or waste cooking oil. Okay. Uh, some typical crops that might be used for uh, oil that we would use for biodiesel include soybean oil, uh, rapeseed oil, also called canola oil. This is probably the typical uh, vegetable oil you might buy at the supermarket for uh, cooking. And then lastly, palm oil. So we have a nice picture of, a, uh, uh, of some palm trees here. Um, okay. So uh, let's talk specifically now about the structure of biodiesel. So this is an example of a biodiesel molecule, and it's methyl uh, linoleate, okay? And this is an ester of a fatty acid. So let's kind of break down uh, some of the things that we're going to see in a biodiesel molecule. So it's typically going to have a hydrocarbon chain consisting of 16 to 20 carbon atoms. And here you can see I've numbered uh, the carbon atoms in that chain. This one has 18 carbon atoms in this. Okay, uh, This is drawn in line notation primarily. So what that's each of these intersections here is a carbon atom. And we're going to assume that each carbon has four bonds to it. So carbon six here has two bonds to carbons, and then it has two other bonds, which are not shown to hydrogens, okay? And, um, okay, what else do we have here? Oh. Uh, also, um, the hydrocarbon chain is typically going to have one or two CC, uh, one, at least one CC double bond. So this one has two, okay? And then in addition, it's going to, uh, have be an ester and the, an ester has this functional group where we've got carbon double bonded to an oxygen that's called carbonyl and on one side of that carbonyl we have an oxygen bonded to an alkyl group in this case a methyl group and then on the other side of the carbonyl we have another alkyl chain and that makes an ester so biodiesel molecules are are, are esters and where do these where do these biodiesel molecules come from? Well, they come from the palm oil, the soybean oil, the canola oil, and those oils have what's known as a structure known as triglycerides. And so this is an example of a triglyceride of steric acid. So you can see here are those esters. So a triglyceride has three esters. And here's a long carbon chain, okay? And what we're going to do to get our biodiesel molecule is we're going to take one molecule of a triglyceride, react it with three molecules of methanol, an alcohol, and we're going to do something called transesterification, maybe, if I can get my slide to work, <laughs> okay? Uh, and this is going to be a... a uh, we're going to use a base, in this case, sodium hydroxide. And what that does is it swaps out um, our ester to make a methyl ester. All right. And in the process, we make a um, byproduct, which is glycerol. And we can have three molecules generated for every molecule of our biodiesel molecule, in this case, methyl stearate. Uh, glycerol. Uh, has a variety of uses. It could be used um, in, in food products or uh, it could be used in soap um, and other uses. It could get um, 
changed into propylene glycol, and, and, and that's basically propylene glycol if you s s substituted out this OH with a hydrogen. You would have propylene glycol, and that can be used as uh, an antifreeze. So keep your coolant in your, your car from freezing, okay, or a component of antifreeze. Okay, so that's, that's biodiesel. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about biofuels in general again. So this, this picture kind of shows um, what fuels are used um, to create the energy that's consumed. Um, so 78.3% of the consumption of energy originated from fossil fuels. And a small fraction of that, 0.8%, came uh, from biofuels in, in 2015, so one, about 1%. Okay, now uh, there's actually, it's trying to figure out whether or not it's a good idea to use biofuels. It turns out to be kind of complicated. And so in these uh, next couple slides, I'm gonna talk about some of the things we have to consider when considering whether or not it's like a good policy decision uh, to use biofuels as as a source of energy for transportation for instance okay so there uh the nuffield council on bioethics has kind of come up with this list of ethical considerations we should consider so uh, one is that we shouldn't uh, do this at the expense of people's essential rights so access to food and water and um, health and, and ability to work and have land uh, additionally, it should be environmentally sustainable. Uh, and uh, kind of the goal of this is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We want to make sure that we're actually reducing <laughs> greenhouse gas emissions if we're using biofuels as a, as a substitute to petroleum-based gasoline. Uh, and then we want to be have fair trade involved in our use of, of biofuels and our um, yeah, and then um, if there's any costs and benefits to, to uh, usage of biofuels, you we want to make sure that they're distributed in an equitable way. So we don't want to like, well, we might, but we shouldn't. We don't want U.S. to get all the benefits, but say, um, I don't know, Costa Rica to get all the costs of, of using biofuels. Okay. Um, and then um, there's other considerations. And if it turns out that it's, it, it, it mitigates climate change without uh, um, too many costs, then we, we should consider developing biofuels. Okay. Um, all right, so a little bit about sustainability and biofuels. Okay, so biofuels are going to be potentially more carbon neutral than petroleum-based gasoline because it's derived from modern-day crops and grasses and trees instead of fossil fuels. Okay, however, there's some other things we need to consider that you might not have initially thought of uh, when we're thinking about using biofuels and, and whether or not they're carbon neutral. So uh, one of those is there's going to be a change in land use, and this could have an impact on, on the carbon cycle. So for instance, let's say we, I don't know, develop uh, biofuels, or we plant a palm tree plantation in Malaysia or Costa Rica or, or I don't know, Nigeria. Well, to do that, we had to cut down some sort of rainforest probably. And then we have to ask the question, well, does the change in that land use, um, what, what effect does that have on, on, on the carbon uh, cycle, okay? And uh, also there's waste for, uh, products that may be developed or may be produced from biofuel production. We should consider that. And then also there's energy that's required to produce biofuels. So we have to think about, well, we had to plant the crop, we have to harvest it, Probably going to need fertilizer, maybe some herbicides, and and water, and all of those um, um, may require some form of energy. And if we're 
burning fossil fuels to get that energy to make these biofuels, well, then that kind of offset some of the, the, the greenhouse gas, gas emission benefits of, of, of producing the biofuels. All right, so that's going to uh, conclude uh, our discussion in Chapter 5 on combustion of, uh, of fuels. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye.